Hi everyone. Hope you all well. Uh, so welcome to this data atelier. So this workshop, uh, which will be uh, about Streamlit. Uh, so I'm just going to wait a bit uh, for everyone to uh, to connect. So we're just waiting. Uh, we're going to start like in one minute uh, this whole presentation. So just taking a look at uh, the comments. Okay, so uh, maybe before uh, we start, uh, I'm just going to introduce myself. So uh, my name is Manon and I'm a data scientist. Uh, I'm a part of the data team and of the pedagogical team at Data Scientist. And uh, for those uh, who don't know uh, what is Data Scientist, uh, I'm just going to introduce a bit uh, what we do and then uh, we will enter uh, the, the whole topic of today. Uh, so Data Scientist is uh, a company uh, which uh, gives some uh, training and courses about all uh, the data uh, jobs and all the data tips, data tools. Uh, so we give some, uh, some training about uh, all the tools of data science, all the tools of data analysis, uh, all the tools also of data engineering, cybersecurity. Uh, so we give many, many formation uh, and trainings. Uh, it is addressed to particulars and also to some companies. So maybe if you want uh, to know some things uh, about uh, data, if you want uh, to start a new job in data, uh, you can maybe check uh, our website and you will get uh, some information about that. So hi, everyone. Uh, just seeing all the comments, so I think that uh, we are some people now, so uh, we'll be able to start, so hello everyone. So I'm just going uh, to share my screen and we start. Okay, so, uh, in fact, you should be able to uh, to see my screen, so I will come back uh, on uh, the comments uh, sometime during the live to answer the questions. Uh, but first, uh, we can begin. So welcome to uh, this data atelier, so this workshop, uh, which will be about uh, Streamlit, uh, and especially how to present a data science project uh, with Streamlit. Uh, because in fact, uh, if you already know some things about uh, data science or even uh, data analysis, uh, you know that when you do your project, you have different steps. Uh, you have to install certain methodology, follow uh, some steps, and code your project uh, in a notebook or a Python file. But it's classic uh, Python code. And maybe at the end of your project, when you have finalized your, your models, uh, you have your results, uh, you can answer your initial uh, project problematic. Uh, it could be interesting to share these results to a team. Uh, if the team, uh, you want to share the result with it, just another data scientist team, you can just then send them uh, your notebook of code, uh, with the, the Python code, and they will understand. Now imagine that you work, uh, I don't know, in consulting or for another company, uh, and you have to give the result uh, to a marketing team or just a team who don't really know how to understand uh, your code. It could be interesting to do a whole oral presentation and uh, to present uh, your project in an interactive way uh, with something which is more clear than just code. And so Streamlit uh, will help us to do that uh, because Streamlit uh, will help you uh, finally to uh, create a whole a web application to share your code uh, and your project in an interactive way. So what is exactly uh, Streamlit? Uh, in fact, uh, Streamlit uh, is a Python library. Uh, so it's really coded in Python, uh, which as I said before, allow you to create uh, interactive web application uh, with many widgets. Uh, so it's really uh, interactive. Uh, and like the whole point is the fact that it's something uh, on the web, but you do not have uh, to have some skills in development or in front development, such as uh, HTML or uh, CSS uh, to create uh, an application web stream. It. It's really easy and totally based on Python. And so, Thanks to this Python library, you can create your uh, interactive web application. And then uh, it's really useful because on this web application, you can create many pages and show uh, the result of your data science project. So show all the data visualization figures that you did uh, in an interactive way, and also uh, show all your prediction, uh, all your results of your machine learning models in an interactive way, uh, as we're going to see. 
So it's really, if you want to sum up a bit, uh, the goal of Summit is really just to present your whole data science project in an interactive way to people who don't really understand your code. So I'm just going to show uh, some uh, example of Streamlit uh, application. Uh, so we have the Streamlit gallery uh, just here, where you can see many uh, many Streamlits. And also um, there is uh, this uh, this website. So it's Studio Data Scientist. It's in fact uh, our studio, uh, like whole page uh, at Data Scientist, uh, on which we put the Streamlit of some uh, group project uh, who, like, who follow, follow, uh, follow training uh, with Data Scientist and project uh, were really good. Uh, so just going to show one. So this is an example of a stream. So as you can see, it's like on the cloud, but it's a web application with different pages. So stream it look like that. And in fact, they divided the stream so the different page of the stream according to uh, their project uh, steps. So in general, what we do uh, is that we create one page uh, per step of the project. So they have a first page to just explain the context of the project. Then second page, just present the whole database that they use for the project. And you can see uh, already that it's something really interactive. You can click on some box, just like that. There is a page dedicated to data visualization. So again, it's really something uh, really interactive. So this project that they present uh, with Remit is a data science project in terms of uh, prediction of uh, a football match uh, results. And so you can see that you can just play with the ID, the data visualization on uh, the uh, football uh, that we show. Uh, so there are many things that you can do. And most important part, I think, is uh, the modeling one. So especially just here, machine learning. Um, and I think that's like the key point of why uh, you should uh, use Streamlit uh, if you want to present data science project is because you have trained many machine learning models, many deep learning models, but it's a bit difficult to summarize everything that you did. You can just do a table uh, with your result, but it's not really interactive. With Streamlit, uh, you can just let the possibility to the user to choose uh, what they want to see, uh, what they want to see, uh, which model they want to train. So for example, here, I can just select my explanatory variable, so my features. I have my target variable, and I can choose uh, the uh, machine learning algorithm that I want to launch. So it means that the team who worked uh, on this project already trained the different models. So they trained these uh, four models. And now they let us the possibility to choose the one uh, for which we want the results. For example, I choose just a KNN. Uh, I can just also play with the IPAPA meter. And then in live, I can launch my model. And I can obtain some results. So you can see there is just a score here, the classification reports, and many things. So it's just an example, but to show you that it's clearly uh, more easy uh, to use Streamlit to show the result of your project than just showing some slides and a notebook of code. Uh, clearly, uh, to do an oral presentation to company, to a certain team, uh, it would be uh, really, uh, really better. OK, so I'm just going to come back uh, to the slides and just maybe explain the difference between uh, Streamlit and Power BI because um, in general, when we think about uh, one uh, tool uh, in, uh, in data which is useful to do something interactive, uh, we think about Power BI. Uh, and in fact, we can do a smaller comparison between Streamlit and Power BI uh, to see which one is more adapted to what situation. Uh, so in fact, uh, Power BI is a business intelligent tool and it allows you to do uh, interactive data visualization. So you can do many interactive plots, many interactive dashboards, many interactive reports. Uh, and it's really useful uh, for companies to take a decision in real time. Uh, you should just import your data. And with Power BI, you can do directly some interactive dashboard uh, with the real time data. So it's really, really useful for data visualization. And the important thing is the fact that Power BI is not coded in Python. It's its own programming language and a graphical interface. Uh, it's not really difficult to take uh, by hand, but it's not Python. And then we have Streamlit. Uh, and as I explained before, Streamlit uh, will be more a tool to present a whole data science project. So not only uh, the data visualization parts, uh, really the whole project, and especially uh, all the results about machine learning. So 
the main difference is really the fact that with Power BI, you won't be able uh, to show uh, the result of your model or you won't be able uh, to launch in live uh, your models. Uh, whereas with Streamlit, uh, it will be possible. Uh, so Streamlit is more complete for a whole data science project. And so I think it depends a bit uh, on uh, like the kind of project you work uh, to choose between Power BI and Streamlit. If you work in a whole data analysis project, you, you just want to do data visualization to analyze data in real time, you can use Power BI. Now, if you want uh, maybe to go further, not only do uh, data analysis on real-time data, but also do some prediction on future data, use machine learning models, use deep learning models, use time series forecasting or something like that, Streamlit will be more adapted. So you can just say that Streamlit uh, allows to present more. And so as I said before, Streamlit is really a Python library. So you do not have to learn a new language, a uh, new programming language. Uh, you're just going to use Python. And especially as we're going to see just after, we're going to use or code of the project and just add some widgets to create the streaming application. Okay, so maybe I'm just going uh, to come back to see if there are some comments. Um, not necessarily at the moment. Uh, yes, there is just one question uh, about uh, will this live even be recorded? Uh, yes, of course, you will have access to uh, the replay on our official YouTube channel. Uh, and also, uh, you uh, will have access to the slides and the notebook that I uh, represent just after. Okay, so I'm just going to come back to the slides. and continue the presentation. Okay, so now that we understood a bit uh, what is the goal uh, of, uh, of Streamlit, what's the interest of Streamlit, I'm going to uh, go more into the details on how it works, how you can create uh, your own uh, application web uh, with Streamlit uh, without any uh, knowing uh, in, uh, in web development. Uh, so this, is a slide about the key, pay, the key uh, points of uh, Streamlit, how to create it. Um, so everything to create your uh, web application Streamlit would be based on uh, two things, a code editor and your terminal of command. So first, you need to know that to create your Streamlit web application, you need to use a code editor. So if two examples of Python code editor, uh, which are the most uh, used, uh, it's Spider and VS Code. But yes, it's a code editor and not a notebook. So you have to do the difference between notebooks, uh, which are in, uh, in the format uh, .epynb. Uh, so for example, Jupyter Notebook, Jupyter Lab, Google Colab notebooks. And on the opposite, you have really a Python file, uh, which are, uh, as it's written, in the .pywat format. Uh, so uh, it's really not a notebook, it's really a Python file with all your codes uh, on the same file. So to create your uh, web application uh, with Remit, you need to use a code editor, so for example, Spider of VS Code, and you're going to put all your code uh, in this file. In practice, what we're, what we're gonna do is just work on your whole project in your notebook as usual. And when the project is totally finished, just going to copy your code from the notebook, import it in this Python file, and just add around your code uh, some, uh, some widgets uh, to create the the streaming web application. But it's really important to know that you have to work in local and in uh, a Python file, so in this format. And second thing, second particularity uh, of Streamlit uh, is the fact that to launch your Streamlit, you will have to use uh, a terminal of command. Uh, so it will depend a bit on if you're working with Windows or if you're working uh, with uh, Mac OS or Linux. So in Windows, uh, we're gonna uh, see you have to use uh, the Anaconda uh, from terminal from Windows for Mac OS or Linux. So if you're working on Mac or on Linux, you can use your classic uh, computer terminal. I'm just going to uh, show how it looks uh, if you are working in Windows. Uh, so what is exactly the Anaconda uh, prompt terminal? Uh, in fact, if you are working with Windows, you will have to uh, download Anaconda. Uh, maybe you already did it if you work uh, already in local, because if you download Anaconda, then you are able to launch uh, some uh, Jupyter notebooks or something like that. So 
you have to download Anaconda from the official website. So you're going to type on, on the web, uh, download Anaconda. You download Anaconda. And when you have downloaded Anaconda, you have this application, which should appear in your computer, which is called the Anaconda Navigator. So on this Anaconda Navigator, as I said before, you can launch some notebooks, so Jupyter Notebook, Jupyter Lab. You can also launch the uh, Python code editors. So as I said before, it's one of the key points of streaming, so Spider or VS Code uh, will be possible. And also on this Anaconda Navigator, you have this PowerShell prompt, uh, which is in fact the terminal uh, of command uh, for Anaconda. So it will launch a terminal. So if you're working with Windows, you uh, download Anaconda, you open the application Anaconda Navigator, and you can open this Anaconda PowerShell prompt, which will be your terminal command. And as I said before, if you are working uh, with uh, like macOS or Linux, then you can stay in your classic terminal. And then uh, you will have uh, three main commands, uh, in fact, uh, to know uh, to launch your, your Streamlink application uh, from this terminal. So. It's not really difficult, there are only three. Uh, the first one is just for the installation of Streamlit. So as I said before, Streamlit is a, a Python library. Uh, every time that you want to install a Python library in local, in your computer, you go on uh, your terminal of command and you're just going to write the command pip install. Then you add the name of your Python library. So in our case, it's pip install Streamlit. Uh, so if you are working with Windows, it should work already because you use the Anaconda prompt uh, terminal. So pip install is a validate uh, command. If you are working with Mac OS or Linux, you have to check uh, that pip is well installed too and can be used as a command. So maybe we're going to do that uh, together. Uh, so I'm just going to come back to my terminal of command in Windows and our want to install Streamlit, so I'm just going to write pip install Streamlit. I'm just going to press enter, and then it will install my library. So in my case, it's written uh, requirement already satisfied uh, because I already uh, have Streamlit. In your case, it will just install the library. And there is just small command to check that Streamlit is well installed. Uh, you can just write Streamlit hello, and you press enter. And then we're just going to wait a bit, but it should just open a Streamlit page. Uh, it's like the welcome page uh, of Streamlit, so a page of, uh, of demonstration. Uh, welcome to Streamlit. Now you are sure that Streamlit is well installed in your computer. So that's the first command to know. It's just for the installation, you have to install Streamlit only once. So just at the beginning, uh, you download Anaconda, you go on the Anaconda uh, navigator, uh, you open your uh, terminal Anaconda, you write pip install Streamlit, it installs Streamlit, and then it will be good uh, for the rest of your life. And then uh, you have two second commands uh, to know this time not to install Streamlit, but really to launch your Streamlit application every time. First command is cd, uh, change directory, so it, it allows you to place yourself in the right folders of your computers, to go in the right place uh, of your computer. So as I said before, to create your web application from it, you will have to use a, a Python file. So this Python file will be saved in a certain folder of your computer. So with the terminal, you have to place yourself in the folder which contains uh, this file. And it will be with the command cd. And then, last command, when your Python file is totally finished, you can just choose on, again, your terminal of command, the command streamlit run, and then you're just going to write the name of your Python file. So streamlit run, name of the Python file dot py, and it will launch your streamlit web application in local. So I think that we understood a bit uh, how, uh, like, what's the goal of streamlit, and how it works, so with a Python file and with a terminal of commands in local on your computer. So now what we're going to do is just uh, try to create uh, a Streamlit uh, application together. Uh, so again, I'm just taking a look at the command. Uh, okay. Um, mm -mm. Okay, so I'm going to 
answer everything. Uh, we will have the slides later. Yes, as I said before, you will have the replay and also the slides and all the notebooks and uh, Python file that I'm going to present today. Another question, uh, can we also use uh, PyCharm instead? Yes, of course. Uh, you can use any, uh, like any tools for creating notebooks or Python file. Uh, the most important thing is really to have uh, a Python file in the case of Streamit, which is in the right format. So if you have a file which is coded in Python and which is uh, in the format .py, it's okay. Um... So there is a comment which is really interesting. Um, for PyCharm, just open your terminal uh, and uh, run ppstash remit uh, to install it in your current uh, environment. Um, it's uh, it's really interesting. Uh, of course, um, like what I'm going to present today is uh, the fact that you are not really uh, good. Like you don't really know uh, how to work with some Python editor. So if you don't really know how to work with Python editors, you create your file in your Python editors and you uh, put the commands uh, in your terminal of command, Anaconda or macOS or Linux. Now for those uh, who know how to work with PyCharm or with VS Code, there is uh, also a terminal which is uh, installed, uh, which is uh, inside uh, your uh, PyCharm uh, editor or inside your VS Code uh, editor. You can also use uh, this terminal of command, of course. Um, which OS is best for machine learning, uh, Linux or Windows? Well, it clearly depends on your on your computer. See, so if you have like uh, a Windows uh, computer, you do not need uh, to add a, a virtual machine, a virtual machine, a VM, uh, especially for streaming. You can continue with Windows, and if you are already working with Linux or with macOS, uh, you can continue uh, with Linux or macOS. Uh, in theory, it doesn't really change uh, anything. Uh, especially for, for machine learning models. Uh, it's more if you want to do like code development, maybe Linux will be better, but in terms of data science or machine learning, Linux or Windows are totally equivalent. Um, doesn't work with uh, IPYNB. Uh, no, it's the particularity of Streamlit. Um, like it allows you to present your project. So your project, you can uh, create it uh, in a classic notebook, so uh, EPYNB. Uh, you do your project as usual. But then when the project is finished and that you want uh, to show it, uh, like, uh, thanks to Streamlit, you cannot choose uh, a notebook. You really have to create a Python file, that uh, .py file. So you can create your Python file using Spider, PyCharm, VS Code, what you want, but it's a Python file with a Python editor. And you're going to use the code from your initial notebook, but add some Streamlit widget. But you, to launch the Streamlit application, we really need uh, to have a, a Python file. So no notebook. Uh, I see some comments uh, about the installation. Um, you, I think that uh, prepare a slide with some classic error when you try to uh, install Streamlit, uh, but you should uh, check uh, first your Python version. Uh, check also that you are working in the right uh, virtual environment and also take a look at the error uh, to understand uh, how you can solve it. Uh, but in general, it's more about uh, versioning of Python, virtual environment, and also some dependency on your package to try to have the last uh, up-to-date version of Python, last up-to-date version of the classic Python library, and it should help, I think. And last question before we continue, is the Streamlit usage uh, completely free? Um, so until now, what I presented is uh, the launch of some Streamlit totally in local. So it creates uh, a web application, but in local, on your computer. So it won't be uh, deployed on a cloud or something like that. It's web application, but in local, so it's completely free. And now in uh, the next part uh, of, the, of the presentation, I will explain uh, to you uh, how you can deploy uh, really uh, in public uh, and not in local uh, your Streamit application, and we will see uh, if it's free. Uh, but yes, uh, really uh, spoiling it, uh, but yes, it's free uh, if you want uh, to deploy it in public and not in private on the web page. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to go back to sharing my screen and we are going to continue the project. 
Okay. Uh, so I think it would be uh, more easy now if we create together a StreamIt web application. I think uh, it will uh, allow uh, those who do not know a StreamIt at all uh, to understand how it works and especially show uh, what I just uh, said about this Python file and about the, the terminal of command. So let's create a StreamIt web application together. So uh, we're going to place ourselves in the project. So imagine that uh, we are working uh, on a project. Uh, so it's a property project uh, or goal, uh, like it's a machine learning project and our goal is to predict uh, the price of a property based on its characteristics. So that's the whole project that we're going to work on. And so uh, they tell us that uh, we have a CSV file, so a housing CSV file containing uh, all the data that we want. So clearly it's a classic project. So before creating our Streamlit, uh, in fact, what we have to do is just to work on the project because as a reminder, Streamlit is really uh, to show uh, in an active way a finished project. So first we have to work uh, as usual uh, on the project and when the project is finished, uh, we can uh, share it with, uh, with Streamlit. So as usual, I'm going to work on my uh, data science project so I can just use a notebook. So here it's a notebook. Uh, so classic uh, Jupyter Notebook, which is in the format EPYNB. Uh, so really, uh, you work on your project on your notebook. So I already prepared uh, the notebook. Uh, I won't detail uh, a lot uh, today what we did, uh, but just to explain a bit. So as I said before, the project we're working on is the prediction of a house price. So we have this CSV file, so housing.csv, uh, which look like that in a data frame. So each row, so each observations correspond to a property. So house, uh, for example, and in columns, we have many variables which give us some information of characteristics of this property. So we have the price, which is in fact what we want to predict. So it's our target variable. We face a supervised machine learning problem because we have a target variable to predict. And in fact, this target variable that we want to predict the price is continuous, uh, quantitative. So we will face a regression problem. And then we have many other variables, which will be our feature or explanatory variables. So the variable which will help us to predict the price. So this is uh, the data that we have. And so on this notebook, uh, I think I, I created uh, like uh, three uh, parts. Uh, so for uh, the main uh, steps uh, of, uh, of the project. So the methodology of a classic data science project is always the same. You're just going to have a first part of data exploration on which you're just going to take a look at the data, try to extract uh, some information about the shape, about the type of the variable. So check that type are uh, the right one. Uh, so in our case, we have this dimension, the type, are good. Here it's just the method describe uh, to give some statistical indicators about the quantitative variables. So it can be useful to detect if there are some outliers values with the minimum and the maximum. So really just small parts of our exploration of the data, data mining. So of course on this notebook I didn't go into the details. Uh, it's really just simple notebook. Uh, that uh, we will be uh, able to use uh, just after uh, to create the streamlit. Of course, the, the project is not uh, totally complete, uh, but it gives you uh, an idea. Then second part of a data science project is more about data analysis. So this time, the goal will be to uh, really analyze your data, uh, depending on some access of studies, uh, to extract this time some information about real-time data. So it's more about the data analysis part. In general, the data analysis that you do uh, is made uh, with data visualization because it will be clearly uh, more clear uh, to take a look at a plot uh, rather than just as some statistical indicators or some written analysis. Um, so in general, in your data analysis, you have three axes of study. Uh, you can focus on the target variable, so the one that you want to predict, to take a look at its distribution. So then just here. Uh, so in our case, as I said before, it's a continuous uh, variable, so quantitative, so just use a displot from Seaborn to have an histogram and also curve of estimation of the density. So just try to take a look at the distribution, the repartition of the observations for the target variable. Then second axis of study would be maybe to take a look at uh, multivariate analysis. Uh, so like the features, the explanatory variable, depending on the target variable. For example, here we have a scatter plot of the array, so one of the feature, one of the explanatory variable, 
depending on the target variable, so depending on the price. And especially, it allows us to see if the array uh, seems to be linked uh, to the price, so if there seems to be a correlation link between the array and the price. If it's the case, it means that the array has a significant impact on the price, so the array can be a useful variable to predict the price. That's a plot. And then third axis of 2D can be a totally multivariate uh, analysis. So take a look uh, at the correlation matrix and especially take a look at the correlation of the uh, explanatory variable between each of them. So for example, uh, the, there are some uh, explanatory variables which are really, really uh, correlated. It's not really necessary to keep them both uh, for the prediction. We can only keep one uh, to escape some redundancy of information. But like the whole point of the presentation is not really a data science, uh, just to explain a bit the project. And then uh, we uh, arrive to uh, the modeling part. So before modeling, we have to finish cleaning our data frame and do the pre-processing. So here I just checked that there was no missing values, no duplicates. We had some categorical variables, so I just did by hand uh, just an encoding of this categorical variable. So I'm just going to replace the categorical modalities by numbers. Uh, so encode them by numerical numbers uh, because we know that machine learning models won't work if there are some textual data. And then I'm just going to uh, prepare uh, my modeling. So in an object Y, my target variable, in an object X, my features. I'm just going to create my uh, two uh, sets, so the trained set on which I'm just going to uh, train my model. So it's the part of the data on which the, mo the model is going to learn. It's going to learn the link between the explanatory variable and the target variable. And the test set, uh, which is more about the evaluation of the performances of the model. Uh, so on the test set, uh, the model will do the prediction on new data that it has never seen. And we will just give to the model the explanatory variables. Is going to predict the target variable and we're going to compare its prediction to the true value of the target to evaluate uh, the performances of the models. So we have auto sets and so as I said before it's a regression problem so I train some uh, regression algorithm so here it's a linear regression just going to train it on the train set and take a look at the results so we have this uh, score uh, so it means that 62 percent uh, of our prediction were good then I'm just going to use random forest regressor. This time I have this score, then kind of regressor, this score. So uh, it's really a uh, classic machine learning uh, project. So the goal is not to enter too much into detail uh, for this project, it's just to introduce a project. Of course, it's not finished. If we wanted to go further, we will have to do some optimization of the models, do some interpretability of the models. So there are many things to, to do uh, in a machine learning uh, project, but the goal was to put the main steps uh, of a project. And so now imagine that it's a project, it finished, and we want to share our results, so our percentage of good uh, performances to our team, uh, so our team uh, which is uh, working in, uh, in properties and want to sell some house, for example. This team uh, maybe won't understand this notebook. So I cannot just send some slides and this notebook uh, to the team. It's clearly uh, not sufficient, not interactive, and maybe they do not uh, understand uh, the Python code. So I'm going to say, OK, I'm just going to create a Streamlit uh, application to present this whole project. How can I do that? So first, I need to install Streamlit. So we did it together before. And then I will have uh, to use a Python file. So. Uh, as I said before, for Python 5, you can use some Python editor, so Spider, VS Code, uh, PyCharm. So in my case, I'm just going to use Spider. I'm going to open it. So I already prepared the code, but imagine that we enter Spider and we have uh, created this file, which is called streamlit.immobilier.py. So it's really a Python file. So you can see it's a Python editor, so that you don't have the cells uh, like you have in a notebook, it's really all the code in the same file. So at the moment on this file, I only imported uh, my, uh, my library and uh, the CSV file. So library, pandas, numpy, also I imported streamit as st. So streamit is installed so I can import it, different library, and I just read my CSV file. And now how 
can I fill uh, this uh, file uh, py? I'm just going to use the code that I have in my notebooks to so the one that I showed you just before. I'm just going to copy it and just transform it a bit uh, such that I can add some uh, streaming widgets uh, to do a, an interactive presentation. So first, uh, I will have to create the structure for uh, my Streamit uh, application. Uh, so what I'm going to do uh, now is just to present the whole code. Uh, it will allow me to present some classic uh, Streamit function, um, classic Streamit widget. These are the most used uh, to create a Streamit application, but of course uh, there is many more. Uh, we will see just after the, the official documentation of Streamit, but at the moment I'm going to present uh, like the classic ones. Uh, it will give you an idea of the one that we used uh, the most. Okay, so first I'm just going to create the architecture of my Streamit application. So as I said before, I already uh, prepared the code and I'm going to do that step by step. So uh, on the example that I show you just at the beginning of the presentation, um, I told you that in general, we create many pages in our uh, Streamit application, one page uh, per step of the project. So that's what we're going uh, to do now. Uh, we have, in fact, four big steps for project. So I want a page uh, for just the context of the project, then a page for all the data exploration, then a page for the data analysis with data visualization, and then the page for the modeling. So in total, four pages. So here, you just have the code, and it would be always the same one to create your different page in your Streamit application. So you're going to use this Streamit uh, function, so ST, uh, which is called sidebar. So you have sidebar title and sidebar radio. Sidebar title, which is to just be written summary. And then you create your different pages on which you're going to be able to click with sidebar radio. So I created my four pages. And then the user can click on go to and choose the pages that you want. So I'm going to save my Python file and launch uh, Streamit, uh, my Streamit uh, for the first time to see uh, what is created now. So I have my Python file, which is saved. Now I want to launch my Streamit with only uh, this at the moment. So I come back to my Anaconda Navigator. I open my terminal, have command, PowerShell prompt. As I said before, uh, I have to use this command uh, cd. It's not that one. It's up. I have to use the command cd, change the story, to be in the right place of my computer. So here my Python file, which is called streaming.immobili, uh, uh, is in the folder document and in the subfolder data atelier. So I'm going to write cd document, cd data atelier. So it means that I'm in the right folder of my computer and I can check that my file is here with the command ls. With ls, I can see that these are all the files which are contained in this folder, and especially there is my file streamit immobilier. And then I'm going to use the command streamit run streamit immobilier.py. And again, I'm just going to click on enter, and it's going to launch my uh, automatically my uh, streamit uh, application web locally on my computer. So it's running as it's written here. So we're just going to wait a bit. Okay. And so at the moment, there is just there are just my four pages which were created. So summary with the sidebar uh, dot title and go to with the sidebar dot radio. And I can go from one page to another. So at the moment, the page are totally empty because I didn't fit anything in my Python file, but it created the architecture of Streamlit. Just going to go back uh, to just uh, some uh, of the questions uh, before I continue uh, to be sure that that anyone are lost. Uh, okay, so just some question. Uh, I already answered. So the, the difference between Streamit and uh, BI. Uh, for BI is really to do data analysis in uh, real time uh, data, uh, and it's only for data visualization. The main difference with Remit and Power BI is the fact that Remit will allow you to present your whole data center project, so not only the data visualization, but also all the machine learning models for future prediction on future data. So 
to Power BI re real time data for data analysis with data visualization interactive, streamed for whole data science projects, including also machine learning in an interactive way. And so the difference is the fact that BI is not in Python, whereas Streamit is a Python library. Uh, okay, question. Uh, this question, so could we have the notebook of the machine learning project at the end of the meeting? Of course, we will have the slide, the notebook, uh, everything. This question is just for after, so how we can deploy the application. Uh, there are some questions about job libs, so I'm just going to explain it just after. Uh, it's, uh, it will be in the machine learning part. Okay, we do have the, the main question at the moment. So I will come back uh, to, uh, to the file. Uh, we're going to fill our Python file uh, together, and when I'm going to fill uh, this Python file, you will see uh, what is job lib and how it's included. Okay, we go back to the file. Okay, so I should share my screen. Okay, I'm just going to come back uh, to my Python file. And then I'm just going to fill uh, my first page of Streamlit. So my first page is just a page for the context, but it can be useful. Take a look at it. So I go back to my Python file and I'm just going to focus on the first page, so page uh, page with the indexation zero, because you know that in Python, uh, index zero for the first one. And so here, just to present uh, some uh, classic uh, like stream it, uh, stream it function. So uh, the stream it function writes allow you uh, to just uh, write something, uh, of course, uh, in stream it, so to just display uh, something uh, in stream it. So it's the equivalent of a print uh, in Python. So it can be used uh, to show a result of a code or to show some text. So here it's just uh, stream it write to explain the context of your project. Uh, there are many alternatives to this stream it uh, write. Uh, you have stream it markdown if you want to really focus uh, on text, which is in the markdown format. So for example, you know that when you're working on a Jupyter notebook, you can put your cell either in a code cell or either in a markdown cell if you, had, if you want to add uh, text with some links or something like that. Exactly the same thing in stream it. If you want to do text with link uh, with some uh, special uh, structure, special formats, you can use uh, streamit dot uh, markdown instead of uh, streamit dot write. So really about like showing uh, text, you have like streamit dot title to write a title, streamit dot either to have a subtitle, streamit dot write uh, to show result of code or uh, just text, streamit dot markdown if you want a specific text in markdown. And then I have uh, more about uh, like some uh, some inputs. If I want to add some inputs, so for example, images, uh, audio or video, I have that image. And here I'm just going to add an image which is saved in my computer. If I wanted to add a video, it would be that video. If I want to add an audio, it would be that audio. All these uh, Python uh, streamlit functions are uh, all repertoried uh, in the streamlit official documentation. Uh, so I will uh, give you the link just after, as I said before, just to present it. So I have filled my first page. Again, I'm just going to save my Python file. And I'm just going to go back to my streamlit. And uh, I don't have to use again the terminal command. I just can go back here and click on rerun just here. So it will just update uh, my streamlit page depending on how I feed the page. So you can see that the first page now is filled, but the other one are still not filled. And so on the first page, I have indeed uh, what is written. Uh, so with the st.write, explain the context and the image is the st.image. So here at the moment, we only created the architecture of the tribute and the first page uh, to explain a bit the context. Now we're going to fill the other page and this time we will use more uh, what we have done before in the notebook. So now we'll focus on the second page, which is more about uh, data exploration. Okay, again, going to use the code I prepare. Okay, up. So now that exploration, so I'm going to focus on the second page. I'm just going to give a title, so with the method right. And then what I want to do first uh, is maybe take a look at the first uh, rows of my data frame. So 
on my notebook, when I wanted to take a look at the first rows of my data frame, I just wrote uh, df.head, classic method. Now, if I want to display it on stream it, uh, I'm just going to use the method st.dataframe. So st.write is when you want to show a result of code or uh, of uh, text, stream it.markdown if you want something in markdown, and stream it.dataframe if you want to display everything which is related to data frame. So df.head, it's about a data frame, st.dataframe. Then uh, on the notebook, I use the method df.shape to take a look at the dimension of my data frame. So it's a code which returns uh, two numbers for the dimension. Now again, if I want to display it on stream it, I'm just going to use st.write. I'm on my notebook, I uh, took a look uh, at the number of missing value with the method df.isna.sum. Now again, if I want to display it on stream it, it's the result of a data frame. So I have to use st.dataframe. And if I want to do something which is maybe more interactive, uh, maybe I can try to create a checkbox. So the goal of the checkbox will be that if the user click on it, it will return a result. So here, if I create a checkbox, it means that every time a user uh, of my stream it will click on it, it will show the number of missing values uh, and exactly the same thing for the duplicates. So here, it's a new uh, function from Streamly that we can uh, present here is stream it that checkbox. So it's really something interactive. So not only display, we had a, a widget. I save my Python file and I'm going to come back to my stream it application. Again, I'm just going to re-execute it. And now my second page should be filled. And you can see that these are the uh, five first rows of my data frame. So with the method df.head and the method stream.dataframe, the dimension of my data frame, and these are the two checkbox. If I click on the checkbox, I have the numbers of missing value, which appear. If I click on this checkbox, I have the number of duplicates, which appear. So as you can see, uh, it's something which is a bit interactive. Uh, here's the basics, but you can imagine that we can do many things uh, in terms of aesthetic and interactivity uh, with this uh, classic uh, function. So we use the code from our notebooks and we're just going to add some streaming methods. Third page, it's more about data analysis with data visualization. So we created before three plots, I think. And so now we want to include them on Streamlit. So again, what I do is that I'm going to focus on my third page, just going to say, okay, it's data analysis. And uh, what we did uh, was a displot with Seaborn for the distribution of the target variable. So this was just a displot. So this is the code that I had in my notebook, SNS for Seaborn, the displot, price, data df, can you get through? And also I had my title. Now, if I want to include it on Streamlit, uh, again, it's um, a Streamlit widget. It will be always the same thing. You have to create a figure and then use the method st.pyplot and put your figure in it. So you use the code from your notebook on which you created your Seaborn or Matplotlib plot. You include it in a figure object and then you're just going to use the function streamlit.pyplot. Uh, finally, it's exactly the same thing for uh, the, the heat map. We had this code on our notebook, uh, submit.heatmap. And again, I'm just going to create a plot and to plot my figure. And there is one thing which is interesting in, uh, in submit is the fact that, as I said before, it's something really interactive. And you know that uh, all the matplotlib or Seaborn plots uh, are interesting in terms of data analysis, but they are not really. Uh, really interactive. Uh, clearly, uh, they, they look like uh, screenshots or uh, fixed uh, plots. Uh, it's not interactive at all. It doesn't look uh, like a poor BI or something like that. Uh, but you know that there exists some uh, other data visualization libraries, so, which are more interactive than Matplotlib or Seaborn. And especially, uh, Plotly is a data visualization uh, library, which is clearly interactive. It allows you to create exactly the same plot as Matplotlib or Seaborn, but in an active, in an interactive way. Sorry, we can click, uh, zoom on the plot, have all uh, the numbers specified, etc. So it's clearly more interactive. And um, the advantage is the fact that Plotly is linked to Streamit, so it's really easy 
to display some, uh, some pretty plot on Streamlit. And so for, uh, if you remember, on my notebook, I created a scatter plot uh, between the price and the array, uh, but it was done with Seaborn. Now imagine that I want to do that with Plotly. So I'm just going to use Plotly, which is in PX. Plotly does scatter. I'm just going to do exactly the same thing. And now I will tell Streamlit, uh, this time not to use streamlit.pyplot, but streamlit.plotchart, because there is specific function from uh, Streamlit to display plotly plots. Again, I'm going to save my file, go back to the Streamlit web application and re-execute it. So I'm just going to finish uh, explaining everything for, uh, for this project and then I will come back to, uh, to answer the question. So page for that analysis, you can see that the plots are displayed uh, so this is the first one, so a classic Seaborn plot for the displot method. The last one is a classic correlation matrix from Seaborn 2. And here there is this plotly plot. Uh, so as you can see, it's more interactive than uh, our previous uh, matplotlib or Seaborn plots. Uh, it's really from, uh, from plotly and it, well uh, it is well displayed uh, on Streamlit. Uh, so you can see it's interactive. You can maybe zoom on it. There's something that you can see on each point you have the exact values, so it's clearly like data visualization tool, uh, which is better uh, for presenting, not really for analysis, because it doesn't really change anything, but for presenting something, it's really interesting, and it's included in Streamlit. And then last part, and it will uh, help you to understand uh, why I use this job leave uh, thing uh, on the notebook, uh, it will be the page about modeling. Okay, so this one is really huge. And I'm going to explain it. This is a code to create my last page, which is about modeling. First, if you remember, and I'm going to go back on my notebook, I did some preprocessing on my data frames. For example, I had to uh, replace the categorical variable by numbers. This time it was really quick, really quick so the preprocessing was not that uh, huge. Uh, but imagine that you had huge preprocessing uh, on a really a large data frame uh, with many rows, many variables. It can take some time to do the preprocessing, it can take some time to execute the preprocessing. The problem is the fact that every time that you launch your Streamlit application, all the code which is in your Python file will be executed again. So if the preprocessing takes a long time to be executed, Every time that you're going to launch your Streamlit application, you will have to wait for the preprocessing to be done. And it's not optimal at all. That's why, in general, what we want to do is to do the majority of our code on uh, the, uh, the notebook and save everything from the notebook and just import uh, what, uh, what is saved uh, into uh, the, the Python file. So for example, here, I'm just going to save my data frame, which is preprocessed, so which is already encoded into a CSV file, which is called df.preprocess.csv. I'm going to save the CSV file in the same folder as uh, my Python file. So again, in document.atelier, I have my CSV file. And then here, I'm just going to import this preprocessed data frame with the classic method pandas.csv. So it means that I do not have to do the encoding uh, every time that I launch my streamlit application. Then, as always, going to separate between y and x, uh, do the train test split so it doesn't take any time, so we do not have to do it outside, do the standardization. And then we are going to face this job lib uh, issue. Uh, again, if I go on my notebook, I train many models. In my case, uh, it was really quick uh, to train the model because I have a small data frame. The model are not that complex. Uh, they are not optimized, so I didn't play with the hyper parameters. Uh, so uh, like the training was really fast. Now imagine that you work on a really huge uh, data frame. Uh, your algorithms are really complex. Uh, they are computational. Uh, you optimize the hyper parameters. Sometimes the training can take like three or four hours. And so, if you do the training in your Python file, it means that every time that you're going to launch the Streamlit application, the training will be done. And so you will have to wait three or four hours to get the results. 
The goal of Joblib is to escape that. Uh, in fact, Joblib is a Python library which allows you to save models. So here, on my notebook, so outside the uh, file uh, Python, uh, the Python file, I train my linear regression model. And then I'm just going to use the method joblibnump and to save my train model into this name. And so it means that on my Python file, I'm just going to import model reg line. Same thing for random forest. I train it on my notebook, so outside the Python file, and I'll save it with joblibnump, etc. Again, uh, exactly uh, like for all the CSV files, I have to be sure that I put the save model in the same folder as uh, my uh, Python file. So again, in document data atelier. And then when I go into my Python file, I'm just going to load them with this time, not joblibnump, but joblibload, joblibload, uh, model reg line, joblibload, model reg random forest, etc. So it means I'm just, I'm just going to import my train saved models. And then I can just do the prediction because the prediction do not take any time. It's really the training it takes a long time. And so I have my prediction and then uh, I say, okay, it could be maybe cool interactive to let the user choose which model you want to uh, have result in live. So this time I'm going to use a select box. So before I presented the checkbox, checkbox, when you click on it, something appears. Select box, uh, it's just like, uh, you can select uh, from many choices. So in our case, we have uh, three options, linear regression, random forest, and KNN. And so if the user uh, uses the select box and selects the model linear regression, then the prediction will be the one from the linear regression. If it's like random forest, the prediction will be the one of the random forest, etc. And then I'm just going to put the result, so put the score of the chosen model. So I'm going to save my Python file and take a look at the last page of my streamlet. So again, I have to rerun. And then if I go to modeling, you can see that I created in this select box. I can choose between linear regression, random forest, and KNN, and every time the score appears. And so, as you can see, I worked uh, on my notebook on my whole project. When the project was finished, I save everything with CSV file or with joblib for the model. And then I can create my streamlit application starting uh, from a Python file. On this Python file, I'm just going to import uh, everything that is saved, copy the code from my notebook and just add some function and some uh, widget streamlit to create my application. Okay, I go back to the uh, comments. Uh, to answer everything. <laughs> okay, uh, so hi, uh, I'm a beginner in data sciences. Can I have the slide of the presentation? Yes, uh, you will have access to the slide, to the replay, everything. Everything will be on this YouTube channel uh, on the replay. Uh, so you will have uh, the replay. And then on the description of the replay, you will have uh, like a link for the slide for the notebook. Uh, can you share the background of Streamit project? Yes, of course. Uh, at the moment, I'm only presenting like the basic of Streamit, so you can understand uh, how it works. Uh, but there are many things that you can do uh, with Streamit. Um, I'm just going to share just after after the comment uh, the official documentation of Streamit because I only presented like the main uh, function, uh, the most used, but it's uh, the basic one. Uh, there is a lot, and you can do uh, something which is really aesthetic and personal uh, with Streamit. Uh, do you have a template for the joblib code? How to create a separate script for the joblib dump and how to, uh, to add joblib load to original script? Uh, in fact, joblib dump just allow you to save your model. So if you are working on your notebook, uh, you train your model and then you just write joblib.dump, name of your model, it will save the model. And then you can just import it with joblib load. So it's not really a JavaScript, it's really just saving and loading. Uh, you can save and load in the same file, uh, it doesn't have any interest, but it can work. You can save uh, on the file and import it on another one. Uh, you just have to be sure that on each of your files, you import well joblib, and then you use 
either job lip dump or either job lip load. Uh, why not ST the data frame DF shape? It's a really good question. Uh, in fact, if you take a look um, at uh, DF shape, uh, it doesn't return a data frame, it returns only the dimension uh, in terms of codes. So if you want to display code on Streamit, it will be more Streamit ST dot write. If you want to display a data frame or a series, it will be ST dot data frame. That's why you need to put ST dot data frame DF dot head, but you need to put uh, ST dot uh, write DF dot shape depends on the structure of your output. Uh, would you recommend to use Streamit as a tool for a portfolio? What would be the best practice, most commonly used tool to do that? Uh, yes, of course, I think that if you work on a data science project uh, on your portfolio, it could be interesting to have uh, two things, uh, a GitHub, uh, repository, so GitHub will allow you to put uh, all your code, so directly the whole code, so uh, your notebook uh, for the project, so it's really just uh, the code brutes, uh, and also to add Streamit more for the presentation uh, of the results. So GitHub just to put the notebook and see uh, directly the code, and Streamit to share the result uh, in an interactive way. Um, can job lib dump also save the training result of a deep learning model like a CNN, for example? It will work for a uh, classic uh, deep learning model, so uh, for example, like uh, MLP, uh, so just neural network. Now, if you have more complex models, so for example, a CNN, uh, it will uh, cost more. So in general, uh, there, there are some alternatives uh, to job lib, to job lib uh, dedicated to deep learning. Uh, you will have to save uh, your uh, your model of deep learning in the uh, H5 format. So it's really an alternative to Jablib, but like it exists at uh, this alternative. Uh, is it also necessary to save the preprocessed data into data frame? Uh, it can be better if your preprocessing takes some time. In our case, it was not really necessary because it was only encoding. Now, if you face a whole uh, huge data frame, large dimension with many rows, that you do a lot of preprocessing and that Every time that you have to do the preprocessing, it takes some time to execute. Yes, you should save uh, your preprocessed data uh, into a CSV file and just import the CSV file for the Streamit uh, page. Uh, with the chublibdem notebook, you just have to add the preprocessed CSV before. Uh, it's two different things. Uh, the CSV file uh, allows you to save a data frame, while chublib allows you to save a model. So in my case, I first save my preprocessed data frame, so the one that I'm going to use for the modeling, into a CSV file, and I import it. And I'm going to save my model with Jublim dump. And of course, in my Python file, I have to import uh, the preprocessed CSV because with Joblib, I can only import uh, the, uh, the train model, but I have to do the prediction uh, inside the Python file. And if I have, want to do the prediction, I have to get my preprocessed data frame again, do the split between train and test and do the prediction with uh, like using uh, the, uh, the save train model on the test set. We have to get both, get back the data and get back the model. Um, so there are some questions about the share of Streamlit. It's just the next part of my presentation. Uh, so, uh, so we'll talk about it. Uh, do you have some cheat sheet for Streamit from uh, mainstream specific code uh, from this library? Uh, I'm not sure that we have a cheat sheet. Uh, for those who follow a training uh, in data science test, uh, there is a module, whole module which is totally dedicated to Streamit. So you can ask uh, for someone uh, from the training to unlock you uh, the module. Uh, for those uh, who are external to data science test, I'm just going to uh, present also the uh, like original, uh, original documentation of Streamit. Uh, the save data uh, with Joblim dump, uh, is it saved locally or in proper paths that the page have access to? Uh, it's saved totally locally. And last question, what to do when Streamit can't find some features during fit after importing the model? 
um, it means that uh, there is a there is a difference between the data frame on which you fit and train the models outside the streamlit and the one on which you want to do the precision uh, inside uh, the, the streamlit uh, file. So you need to check uh, that the preprocessing is the same uh, when you did uh, the dump with joblib and when you load uh, the joblib. So this needs to be consistent. Uh, of course, if you save a model with joblib and then you want to do the prediction with the save model, you have to do the prediction on the same uh, features, on the same test set uh, which were created before. Okay, so going to share again my screen and uh, just to show you uh, indeed this uh, this Streamlit documentation. Uh, so I think that the link uh, is on the slide and so you will have access to the slide. Uh, but this is the official uh, documentation of Streamlit because uh, as I said, I, today I presented like the most uh, used function, uh, but there exists many more for those uh, who are following uh, the data center training. You have the module on which uh, you have a sum up of all other function. Uh, for those from outside, you can use uh, the official documentation of Shumit. In fact, it's really, uh, really well done. Uh, you have the uh, API. So here, just all the things to display something in Shumit. So was a write, was a markdown, was a title, uh, something like that. You have everything also about like the data frame, so that element. So you will show you will have this ST dot data frame that we used a lot today. Then you have everything uh, about uh, I don't know some input widgets to the button. So today we saw the checkbox and the select box, but there exists many more. Uh, we saw uh, we saw also uh, the radio. So you have everything on this remit documentation. So you will have the link uh, on the slide have access to the slide. Uh, I really suggest you to start from the classic method that I presented today to just create the architecture of your stream meet and then take a look at this documentation if you want to do uh, things uh, which are a bit more uh, complex. Okay. Um, so here, just a slide. Uh, we sum up what we did. So we, we finished working on our project on the netbook. We can now present it to, a uh, to our team uh, by using Streamlit. So installation of Streamlit only once, creating uh, creation of our Streamlit uh, immobile.power file on Spider or in any Python editor. Adapt our code from the notebook to the file by including some Streamlit commands, and then use the terminal to launch the Streamlit web application. And so here I just uh, did a slide of some classic error uh, in Streamlit. Uh, to be sure that uh, it worked correctly. Uh, so it's just four errors that occurred often. Uh, first, be sure that you install Streamlit in your correct place, in the correct place. Uh, so it's supposed to be correct Python environment. So sometimes uh, in your project, you need to create some virtual environment uh, in Python. So you go on Anaconda and you create some Python environment. You need to be sure that you are in the right Python environment. So especially that you install uh, Streamlit on the environment that you use for your project. And so here it just commands uh, pip freeze uh, that you can use on your terminal on your Python environment to see all the, the library which exists in your Python environment and you can check if there is Streamlit. Then second thing, uh, really important, I already uh, told that before, but all the files need to be in the same folder. So it means that your Streamlit file, so in our case it was Streamlit uh, immobility py file. Uh, it was in the folder documents and then in the subfolder uh, data atelier. And everything should be uh, inside this folder. So also the CSV file that I use, so my initial uh, CSV file, uh, which was uh, housing the CSV file, my DF preprocess uh, CSV, all my job file, all the images that I wanted, everything should be uh, on the same uh, folder of my computer. And then I'm going to place myself in this folder with the command CD and everything should be there. Uh, special attention for those who use uh, VS Code, um, because uh, today I use Spider, so Python Code Editor. If you use VS Code, uh, pay attention. Uh, it was one of the questions at the beginning. Uh, if you use VS Code, uh, if it's VS Code from Anaconda, you can use the classic Anaconda terminal to launch your Streamlit. Now, uh, if you want to use uh, the terminal from uh, VS Code, so inside VS Code, uh, pay attention to be in the correct root uh, directory. 
And finally, last thing, uh, Streamit is a uh, Python, uh, Python library, so Python package. Uh, so there are many, many uh, dependencies uh, between all the Python library. Uh, and you need to check uh, the versioning. So if you have an error and they say, okay, maybe uh, Streamit uh, uh, is not installed, uh, Streamit doesn't exist, or if at the opposite, Streamit works, but now they tell you uh, that Matplotlib, uh, for example, doesn't exist, it's clearly a problem of dependency between Matplotlib and Streamit or between any uh, Python library and Streamit. So you need to update first uh, Python, update all uh, your library and check uh, everything, so especially uh, you can add some requirements uh, file uh, on uh, if you are working with GitHub uh, with specify all the library that you use for the project and their version uh, such that it can work. So really pay attention to the versioning. Uh, try to do uh, many updates, uh, as much as update uh, as possible of your uh, library to be sure that everything works correctly. And if you have some errors, so for example, Matplotlib doesn't work, uh, you need to check. Uh, on the uh, official uh, Streamit website, if there is a link between Matplotlib and uh, Streamit, if the installation of Streamit maybe unlink uh, something in Matplotlib or anything. So really pay attention uh, to the package dependency. Okay. Uh, so until now, uh, like the Streamit the web application uh, that I created uh, was in local. So as you can see, uh, I use uh, my terminal of command and it opened uh, automatically a local uh, web application. Now imagine that I want to share my Streamit web application and not just uh, share my screen like today, I want really to share it uh, to people. I have two possibilities. First possibility is just I'm going to send uh, my Python file uh, I don't know. I don't know if I if I want to uh, share my screen stream it to my colleague. I'm just going to send to my colleague my Python file and tell him, okay, you're just going to do as I did today. You're going to open Anaconda, open your terminal, uh, write stream it run and launch my Python file, and it will open stream it locally on your computer. But this first option uh, is good only uh, if you want to share it to only a few people and if these people uh, know how to work with Anaconda. Now imagine that I really want, I really want to uh, this time uh, expose, uh, give uh, some visibility to my Streamit application and uh, to uh, have a web uh, application page, which is not in local. So I want to host, uh, to deploy my application Streamit. It's possible thanks to uh, the uh, Streamit cloud. So I'm going to be there. So this is the streaming cloud. Uh, so again, uh, the link will be on the slide, but this is the streaming cloud. And in fact, it's a cloud on which uh, you can just uh, like launch and deploy uh, your streaming application and it will be visible by everyone. So you have the gallery just here on which are all uh, the, the streaming web application which were deployed on this cloud. And this time, if you deploy your streaming application on this cloud, uh, you will have a link public link and you're just going to send the link uh, like it's a classic website uh, to people uh, which you want to share your streaming application. So there is a small explanation on my slide on how to deploy uh, your streaming application uh, on this cloud. Uh, so as written, streaming cloud allow to easily share a streaming web application, especially with people who do not know how to use the terminal of command, how to do that. Uh, first, I'm going uh, like Oh, we can do that, uh, it's totally linked to GitHub. So for those who do not uh, know uh, what is GitHub, GitHub uh, allow you in fact to uh, create some repository. So it's a cloud uh, and on the repository, you can put everything, every uh, notebook, every Python file, every data that you want, which is related to a project. So if I want to uh, like deploy my uh, Streamit application. First, I need to create a GitHub repository. So I'm going to go on GitHub, create a, a repository dedicated to my project, and I'm going to upload my Python file containing the Streamit codes, in my case, uh, Streamit uh, immobilier.py, on this repository. Then when I have my code on the GitHub repository, I go back to the Streamit cloud. I'm going to create an account on the Streamit cloud, and I'm going just to associate my GitHub repository to the Streamit cloud, and it's going to deploy it. For example, here on the first uh, screen, it's uh, like classic uh, GitHub repository. So GitHub repository look like that. And I imported my uh, Python file, so .py, uh, which contain uh, my code for the Streamit. Then I go 
on the cloud streamlet. I click on deploy an app, and then I'm just going to choose my GitHub repository. So here I'm just going to say, okay, uh, this is the link of my GitHub repository. And I will be able to deploy it. So two possibilities, rather you stay in local or rather you want to deploy a streaming application to have uh, a public uh, web application, a public uh, web page. If you want to have a public web page, first you need to create a GitHub repository on which you're going to put your code, especially the Python file. And then you go back uh, to uh, the cloud streamlit and you're going to load uh, and to link uh, the, the cloud streamlit to your GitHub repository. Now, maybe the question that uh, you ask yourself is, uh, how can we do in terms of privacy? Uh, because if I deploy uh, my uh, streaming application on a cloud, uh, in terms of confidentiality, uh, it can be a bit problematic. So on the cloud streamlit, uh, you can deploy a number which is unlimited uh, of uh, streamlit in public. So it's totally free if you want to deploy uh, public um, Streamit web application on the cloud, it's free and you can do uh, an infinite number. Now, if you want to do something which is private, so you you have, uh, like, it's deployed, but you have to give access uh, to uh, to this uh, web application to specific persons uh, in terms of confidentiality, uh, this time uh, it's limited. Uh, I think that we have uh, three uh, private uh, streamit which are possibly uh, hosted on the cloud. And so how to do that, how to do that in, uh, in private, uh, your GitHub repository needs to be private. If you have public GitHub repository, by default, your streamlit uh, will be hosted uh, in public. If you have a private uh, GitHub repository, by default, your streamlit uh, will be hosted in private. And I just had a small part about all uh, the confidentiality uh, issue with streamlit um, because Imagine that you want to create a, a private uh, streamlit uh, web application which is deployed. As I said before, you have to use a private GitHub repository, but it means that each person uh, will have access to uh, your uh, streamlit web application, even if it's only a few because it's private. They will also have access to uh, your uh, private GitHub repository, and maybe you want to be uh, even more confidential in your private repository and not put everything on the repository. Uh, then there is this option, which is called uh, streaming.secrets, uh, which allow you to not upload everything uh, on the, on the GitHub, GitHub repository. You can hide something into the GitHub repository. Uh, there are some uh, hide uh, data or hide variable, uh, which are not put uh, and not upload uh, on the GitHub repository, uh, which are totally hide but you can still access to them uh, in, uh, in your streamlit. So it's made with the function st.secrets. Um, okay, so maybe I can come back to see if there are some questions about that. Um, mm -mm -mm. Uh, please, can you explain me the rewards of streaming in machine learning? Uh, in fact, in machine learning, uh, streaming uh, is not uh, useful in terms of uh, creating models. Uh, so it's only there to present your project. So you do your whole project without streaming. And if you want to present it, uh, for example, as I said before, to deploy a web application with all the results of your machine learning project uh, to give it some visibility, you can use streaming. So it's like, Power BI is used to present data visualization interactively. Streamit is used to present machine learning interactively, but it's really in terms of presentation and not in terms of results. Uh, about GitHub, um, there is an extension uh, for a, which is called a GitHub a Large File, uh, GLF, uh, which allow you to uh, import uh, things which are uh, bigger into your GitHub repository. So you should check uh, this uh, GitHub uh, large file possibility. If I understood correctly, we cannot run a stream it without GitHub. You can run it locally, but if you want to deploy it, you need to use uh, a GitHub repository, yes. So 
So I think it's the same question. If you are talking in terms of file that you want to uh, import into your GitHub repository, you have uh, this option, which is called a uh, GitHub large file. Uh, so it's something to uh, install and to download, but it allows you to uh, commit and to push a uh, larger file uh, into your GitHub repository and then to be deploy, uh, able to deploy them on Streamlit. Okay, so I don't see any other question. Uh, I think that it was what I wanted to, uh, to present today. So really explain uh, what is Streamlit, so this Python library, which do not allow you to treat machine learning project, which allow you to present a machine learning project uh, to other team without just showing a code of notebook, uh, notebook of code. Uh, it can be really frustrating to just show code. Um, and also to give some visibility to a project, it's really interesting to use for me. So it's really a Python library. Uh, important thing, you have to work with the Python file, so not a notebook, really a py file, and to use uh, the command of your terminal. You start from uh, the code in your notebook when the project is finished, and you had some uh, functions from it. All the functions from it are uh, in uh, the Streamlit uh, official uh, documentation, so you can uh, take a look at it uh, and also take a look at uh, the one I presented today. And it allows you to create a web application. Uh, by default, it's in local, but it's possible to host it on the cloud stream and if you want to host it, uh, pay attention, you have to use a GitHub repository and also pay attention to the confidentiality issue. Uh, so uh, if you want to put your uh, repository uh, GitHub in private and also the deployment of Streamit in private, and also if you want uh, maybe to use uh, the Streamit uh, secrets. Uh, and of course, uh, you will have access uh, to the replay on our official uh, YouTube channel. Uh, so if you go on uh, YouTube uh, data scientist uh, on live, uh, there will be all the replay and on the description of the replay, uh, you will have access to uh, the slides, uh, the notebook and the Python file that I used today. Um, there are some last question. Um, the data has to be on GitHub too. Yes, if you want uh, to deploy your uh, Streamit web application, you have to put everything which is related to Streamit on the GitHub repository. That's why uh, there are some confidentiality issues sometimes. Uh, with Streamit, take part in print or only uh, like uh, that we can learn. Uh, it depends on uh, which training uh, you are following uh, with data scientist, but uh, for example, in data analyst uh, or data scientist uh, training, uh, Streamit is a module uh, that you're going to learn. And especially if you're working uh, with data scientist, uh, you're going to uh, have to work on the whole project during the whole training. And at the end of the project, uh, you will have an oral defense and it's really recommended uh, to use a Streamit for the oral defense. So yes, it's something that you're going to learn. And there is a, a module, so you can ask uh, us to unlock you the, the module. Uh, the requirement.txt work, uh, it's just a file uh, on which you, uh, like a classic configuration file, on which you're, you're just going to put uh, all uh, the library that you're using for a project and their version. And so in general, in your GitHub repository, you're going to uh, import this requirement.txt uh, file, such that every person who wants to launch uh, by side uh, your your code, uh, know uh, on which environment, on which Python environment he has to work. Uh, for the data scientist project presentation, the recommends from it local or from the cloud. Uh, it doesn't really change anything. Uh, in fact, the oral defense uh, will be on Zoom and you would just going to share your screen. So if you share your screen with a local stream it or with a cloud stream it, it won't change anything. Uh, the result will be the same, so it's more for you. Uh, if you want maybe to give some visibility to your project, uh, you, can, uh, you can maybe deploy it on the cloud and such that on uh, your CV, on your portfolio, uh, you can just uh, put the link. But for the old defense, it doesn't change anything as it's it just uh, like share screen. How to reduce the size of the data on uh, Streamit because it takes a lot of time uh, to execute. Uh, you cannot really uh, reduce the size of your data. 
like the only tips at this uh, advice I can give you is just to do all the preprocessing, do all the transformation uh, which are possible outside uh, the submit and just import the clean uh, version of your data frame uh, on the file. But if you face a large data frame, uh, you cannot do uh, anything. Uh, if it's really, really huge for the presentation, you can just use maybe like part of your data frame and not the whole data frame. But there are no uh, like techniques uh, to reduce the time when it's really the size of your data and not the transformation and the models on, uh, on which you apply it. So I don't see any other question. Uh, so I think that uh, we're going to stop now. So I hope this presentation was uh, useful, especially for those who didn't know StreamIt at all and for those who didn't know uh, how to use it. Um, so I hope it was clear. Uh, and uh, do not hesitate to ask uh, your question if they come after. Uh, just. Uh, just below the replay, so you will have access to the replay uh, in the section of comments. If you have any questions, do not hesitate. Uh, we will answer. And uh, thank you so much for, for your attention. And uh, I hope uh, it will help you to create uh, your first remit uh, web application for all your projects. Thank you so much and uh, have a good day. Bye.